How's everybody doing? Yeah. Are you glad you're here? Yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm here. Thanks so much, Karen, for the invitation and for giving me the opportunity to be here. I'm going to need your help in a few ways. One, let me show you the first thing I need your help with. I need five people who want a really cool free t-shirt, all right? It says, I resist. I resist the liberal, big spending, tax increasing, anti-business, liberty destroying, big government, socialistic, unconstitutional agenda. All right, so if you want a free t-shirt, I need five people right now. You better hurry. Oh. 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 <laughs> Thanks so much. You know, I had the great privilege of speaking at the April 15th rally, and it was at a very, very interesting time. I had the privilege of speaking exactly, Karen, at 12 o'clock, right when hundreds of thousands of people all across the country were honking their horns and sending up a big rally cry that was heard across this nation. And when I did that, I shared you a little bit about what my organization, Grassfire.org, has been doing over the past few months. We launched a campaign around a simple theme. We called it a patriotic resistance against this march towards socialism. And I shared with you, and you guys helped me, a really simple message. Karen, I'm sure you remember. We all chanted, we resist. You know, resistance has a long and dignified history in this country. Let me tell you something Thomas Jefferson said. What country can preserve its liberties if its rulers are not warned from time to time that their people preserve the spirit of resistance? What country can survive unless the people preserve their spirit of resistance? So when President Obama said that, quote, only government can solve our problems, on April 15th, we chanted, we, we resist. resist. And when the federal government rapidly expanded to consume nearly 30% of the economy, 30% of our gross domestic product, on April 15th, we chanted, we, we resist. resist. And when Newsweek magazine, that bastion of liberalism, proclaimed on its cover, we are all socialists. On April 15th, we chanted, we resist. Well, for these past two months, we've been doing a lot of resisting, haven't we? It's been a tough fight. And we continue to resist what is the fastest and most aggressive march towards socialism in our nation's history. And now, as the Obama-led socialists move to systematically nationalize entire industries, we say, we resist. And as they nationalize the banking and home mortgage industry, we say, we resist. And as they consume the private student loan industry, we say, we resist. And as they take over the U.S. auto industry to create government motors, we say, we resist. And as they unfold their plan to create socialized health care, literally in the next 30 days, we say, we, we resist. resist. And as they try to impose a massive carbon tax, cap and trade energy tax that nationalizes our energy system, today, we say, we, we resist. resist. They want to tell us what kind of cars to drive, what kind of light bulbs to put in our homes, and how much money we can make. This is statism. This is socialism by definition, and we need to call it what it is. But you know, there's another view that's being cultivated at these tea parties, a view that recognizes the God-given liberties in each individual. It understands that rights don't come from the state. Did you hear me? Rights do not come from the state. The state does not give us rights. We have been endowed, you guys know it, by our creator, with certain inalienable rights. The rights come from a higher place. We don't get rights from the state. And we see government as the servant of the people with limited enumerated powers outlined in our Constitution. Our view of the world wants you to decide
decide what kind of car you drive, what kind of light bulbs you put in your house. What a concept. Thomas Edison bulbs. And even how much money you make. You know, there's a real effort to decide how much money you make. So we boldly move forward to resist, but it has to be the beginning. We have to translate this grassroots resistance into a boots on the ground political movement to restore political authority to liberty-based constitutional ideas. I'm gonna repeat that, you gotta hear that. We have to translate this Tea Party movement into a boots on the ground political movement to restore political authority to liberty-based constitutional ideas. And we have to build around clear, clear themes that restrain government and bring together the vast majority of the American people who think just like you. They're not here today, but they think just like you if you ask them about these issues. So we need to find a way to restrain government and bring us together. Let me very quickly propose four ideas that we could require any candidate and every candidate seeking our votes to agree with. First of all, number one, strictly limit the size of government. Now there are many ways we can do this. Let me suggest you a really good way. If we assign a strict limit on how big government can be to the percentage of the gross domestic product that the government can spend. Government is now spending over 30% of the entire economy. Why don't we tell the government they can only spend a certain amount? I mean, I'd be willing to give them a tithe. You know, 10%. It's good enough for God. I know some of you don't even want to give them 10%. But let's say, if we can get them to 10%, that'd be a good thing. So we want to strictly limit the size of government. Secondly, we want to restrict the means of taxation. This is the tool of oppression. The means of taxation is the tool of oppression. We must abolish the multi-tiered system of taxation. You can't even count the number of ways you're taxed. We must disband the IRS. And we must create one consolidated tax that every American understands, that every American knows, so if they try to raise the tax, we can rise up and tell them no. So first we gotta, rest- we gotta limit the size of government. Secondly, we gotta restrict the means of oppression, the means of taxation. Third, we must impose, impose term limits. Yeah! yeah. yeah. You know, after the contract with America, the Republicans came sweeping in, had lots of good ideas. And, oh, no, we don't want to do term limits because that limits us, too. Well, we tried that. It didn't work. You know what? We shouldn't require any citizen to serve more than 12 years in Congress. Twelve, Give up 12 years. There's 300 million people. We can find enough people to serve in Congress. 12 years and no more. 12 years and no more. Then go back to the, your community, go back to your churches, go back to your business, let someone else step up and serve this country. So we need to limit the size of government, we need to restrict the means of taxation, we need to impose term limits, and finally we must purge this nationalization of our society. We must roll back the government ownership of banking and the insurance industry, auto, student loans, healthcare, energy, and that's just for starters. Then we'll start working on education in other areas. So I just stand before you as a fellow citizen, and I ask you to join with what's happening here in Hampton Roads, and, and literally millions of freedom-loving Americans across this country to resist this move towards statism and restore republic. If you want to work with grassfire.org, go to the website, I'd love to help you, but there's t- hrtparty.com, there's plenty of ways for you to get involved. 